In this video, I'm going to talk about bioethics. What is bioethics? Lessons I learned, also a couple of issues in bioethics, and free recommendations. My name is Peter Joosten. I'm a biohacker and a cyborg futurist. My specialty is human enhancement, human augmentation, the impact of technology on mankind. And I write blog articles about this and I make videos. So if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below. And also if you want to hire me to deliver a keynote presentation, maybe a virtual keynote or a webinar, you can also find the links to that down below. And if you like this video, of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Then you get a notification when I publish a new video. I love Italy. Ciao, espresso, pizza, arrivederci. I live in the Netherlands, in Europe. So I went to Italy a couple of times, for example, to Florence, to Siena, to Tuscany, to Napoli, to Sicily, to the Cinque Terre. And I love the food, the coffee, but also the, the ancient buildings and also La Dolce Vita, how the Italians, they really indulge in the most beautiful things in life. And I also like to go to Italy for active vacations. For example, I went hiking in the mountains, uh, also cycling. We went from Bormio and then we went up to the Stelvio and the Gavia. If you like professional cycling, you know what I mean. Uh, but I also went skiing in the mountains and I also did a runcation. So I had to run for a week um, from Rifugio to Rifugio and it was really amazing. I, I love Italy. But there was one thing because I never went to the capital, the city of Rome. So let me take you back to 2019. It's spring and I'm looking to do a summer course in bioethics. So I go online and there I found a course organized at, in Rome by the Regina Apotolostrum Pontificial University. And they organize a course in bioethics, but there's a caveat because this university is affiliated to the Vatican, to the Catholic Church. And I myself, I'm an agnost or atheist sometimes, I'm not a Christian. So I sent an email to one of the professors if they would welcome me as a student. And I got a reply back, of course you're welcome. We invite people from all different nations and stances, so we have a fruitful discussion in the classroom. Well, that actually happened, but I will share that later on in the video. So I was really energized because I had the opportunity to visit Rome, a city where I heard a lot of amazing stories about and also combine it with the opportunity to gain new insights and knowledge on the topic of bioethics. So to give you an overview, I'm going to talk about ethics, bioethics, why it is important and also becoming more important bioethics. I'm going to share three lessons I learned from the summer course in Rome. I'm going to share a couple of issues in the topic of bioethics and I'm going to end with three recommendations. So what is ethics? Ethics is a system of moral principles. So in normal language, it's about how people live their life and make their decisions and how they think about certain decision, how it will impact them as an individual, but also how it will impact society as a whole. And there are different forms of ethics. You have also the general ethics, but you also have uh, technology ethics, medical ethics. And if you're interested in technology ethics, I also made another video about technology ethics. So I will share a link down below. And of course you have bioethics. And bioethics is involved with the use of biotechnology, and the issues and difficulties that arise from applying these biotechnologies. Why is bioethics becoming more important? That's because we have made a lot of progress in biotechnology, both in science and engineering. And of course, we can see a lot of examples. You can think of GMOs, genetically modified organisms that are being used, for example, in agriculture. But another example is my specialty where it's about human enhancement and human augmentation. And as you can see in this article, technology will soon give us precise control over our brains and genes. So what will happen if we can change our genetic with genetic modification, um, but also maybe we can also change our brains. So the domain of bioethics 
can influence agriculture, industry, society, but also us ourselves as humans. And one of the philosophies is, for example, can we change our genes or maybe our brain so we become nicer people, so we become better humans, so we can increase our morality? Well, of course, that's a gigantic bioethical question, uh, but I like what the makers of South Park did. Um, so we, I want to share a little clip about Cartman and morality. Patient B5, would you step out here, please? Patient B5 here has been fitted with the new V-chip. Ah, oh, my head hurts. Don't worry about that. Now, I want you to say, doggy. Doggy. Notice that nothing happens. Now say, Montana. Montana. Good. Now, pillow. Pillow. All right. Now I want you to say, horsebucker. Go ahead, Eric. It's all right. Hush, for the <laughs> day. That hurt, God damn it! Ow! Oh, fuck! Now I'd like you to say, big floppy donkey dick. No! Success! The child doesn't want to swear! This isn't fair, you send a baby here! We will <laughs> stop putting these chips in all our children next week! So, I'm going to share my experience with the summer course at the university in Rome. So the summer course was one week and what I really liked was there was a diverse group of students. So there were also a lot of priests in the classroom and they, um, yeah, this course was, uh, was part of their ongoing education and training. But there were also yeah, people from the outside just like me who are just interested in this topic of bioethics. For example, there was also a medical practitioner in the room and also people from the States, also from South America. And what I also found very funny is that we had uh, uh, teachers in front of the classroom and then at the back of the classroom there was a translator. So some of the teachers and professors, they gave their lesson in Italian. So and then I had headphones also with other non-Italian uh, speakers where I could listen to the translator. And there were also some professors who taught in English and then the Italian non-speaking English people they put on their headphones. So to share some of the subjects in the course, uh, we talked about embryos and also what's the state of an embryo and how can we use it in certain scientific research and also what's the stance of the Catholic Church on that kind of research. Um, but we also talked about genetic modification with the use of CRISPR-Cas9, for example, and also about neurotechnology. And there were also some ideas about transhumanism, which were explained and we, which we discussed in the classroom. So it was really a nice, broad overview of all different topics involved in the realm of bioethics. So now I want to share three lessons I learned from the course in Rome. The first one is that religions are actually aware of these developments. And <laughs> maybe this sounds strange, but for me as a non-Christian, that was really a surprise because I was not aware that institutions like the Catholic Church and the Vatican, they actually have scholars and academics who follow this domain of scientific research, of biotechnology. And to give advice about what's the stance of the Catholic Church in this case on this different on all these different topics in bioethics. So that's one thing I was not aware of. The second lesson I learned or lesson is that I, like I mentioned, there was also some disagreement between me and one of the professors. And it had to do with this lecture, which was about what's the moral status of an embryo. And this was one of the slides which led the professor to an argument about the status of an embryo concerning at least what the Catholic Church opinion is of, of that. And that's not necessarily my opinion, but that's not, not a problem. But I think this is not a really good argument to convince me. Uh, this is a slide where there was a difference between uh, substances. So in high above in this graph is God, and then you have angels and then you have humans. And I asked the professor, what's your scientific proof that there are actually angels? And he could not really give a clear answer to me. Uh, but what I also do not like about this, this, this slide is that they're like a, they see it as a, a distance, a distinction between animals and humans. Well, I think we are just homo sapiens. We are one of the animals. And I think it's a problem that we see ourselves as something different compared to other animals. But 
um, I like to be open-minded so it was really interesting for me to hear their uh, arguments but we agreed to disagree in the end so and the third lesson I learned it's really nice to have that connection outside of the classroom with my fellow classmates so this is a picture at the last day we went out after we got our certification to uh, drink some wine and beers and have pizza of course with each other and I also remember I also went with one of the German priests to um, uh, to his house and that was a uh, they were at the time there was a world championship soccer for women and at that time the Dutch team was in the semi-final so they had to play one match to go one round further I think to the finals uh, and then I was there with the German priest, but also with some couple of other priests. And I was the only not priest and also not Christian. Uh, but we looked soccer, we drink beer and we had banter and we had a, a laugh. So I had an amazing evening. That's one of my fond memories I have of that summer course. So I already shared a couple of issues when I talked about the summer course think about uh, embryos uh, in vitro fertilization but there are also some other issues in the field of bioethics this stays an important development as you can see for example in this article where it's about controversial new guidelines would allow experiments on more mature embryo human embryos so there's really a debate because scientists they want to um, yeah let embryos live for a longer period of time to do experiments to look how an, if an embryo is developing. Um, yeah, but it really depends on your bioethical stance about how far do you want this period to lengthen because now scientists are obliged to destroy the embryos after a couple of days when they want to conduct their experiments. So that is one example. Another example is the field of organoids. So organoids are sort of model organs. So you can use biotechnology to make a little miniature organ and then you can use that to, for example, see if a medic certain medicine is working or also how a certain organ is functioning. And of course, it's really amazing because we can use it for the progress in, in, in medical sciences and then and maybe also make improvements in our healthcare system and make people live longer and suffer less. But it also involves a couple of bioethical questions. For example, what if you have a brain organoid and will that brain organoid will develop, will that brain organoid have consciousness, for example? So these are a couple of examples of issues in bioethics. But I also should have one caveat because I always have the impression that biotechnology looks the same as information technology. So just like coding ones and zeros, we can also code life with ACGG, with genetic modification. But I like this quote from the amazing book Behave by Robert Sapolsky. And he says, instead of causes, biology is repeatedly about propensities, potentials, vulnerabilities, predispositions, proclivities, interactions, modulations, contingencies, if then clauses, context dependencies, exaberration or diminution or pre-existing tendencies, circles and loops and spirals and Mobius strips. Well, I don't even know what all the terms mean in this quote. And a Mobius strip is a three-dimensional shape with only one surface. So, and that's also my experience I had. So besides to going to Rome for the summer course in bioethics, I also did a course at the Biohack Academy in the Waag in Amsterdam. And there we learned the basic fundamentals of biotechnology. For example, uh, working sterile, doing genetic analysis, also looking at genetic modification, for example. And at that course, my main takeaway of that course was that indeed biotechnology is a lot messier than information technology. So the progress in biotechnology was immense and also will be immense but you also have to remember that it's less straightforward so you have do not really have the cause and effect relationship you have in information technology but nevertheless i think bioethics like i mentioned is again gaining more and more importance in our lives and i to close i want to share three recommendations we need to be aware we need institutions and we need an ongoing debate so the first recommendation is that we need to be aware of these developments are coming away because they will influence agriculture, for example, with GMOs, 
they will influence uh, industry, think of biofuels, uh, they will influence the healthcare system, maybe influence ourselves with the use of genetic modification on humans. So there are gigantic opportunities, like this quote from the book What's Your Biostrategy, where they say we need another decade or so to shape the engineering landscape of biotechnology, but the commercial opportunities are infinite. So with these infinite opportunities, that will impact me and you and everybody around us. If you're working in a pharmaceutical company, if you're working in healthcare, if you're in a government organization, or if you're a student, you need to be aware of the technologies that are heading our way. In that way, you can have a better opinion about what we should allow or not. So you, have a better, you are better informed to be involved in these bioethical debates. And this, my second recommendation is that we also need better oversight. And I like the work of Alex Perlman. And in this essay, she recommends that the U US, the United States, they have like a permanent bioethics commission. Um, but I think it would even be better if we have like a global institution. And the main reason is that biotechnology will influence us all. And I think it's not a good idea that certain countries have less strict laws and regulations. And that could also be a major risk to the inhabitants of that country but also to the world as a whole. So it's, I think it's good that we have like a general oversight on a global level to, yeah, to guide us and, and also to inform us and educate us about the different applications of new bi biotechnologies that are just coming out of the research labs. And the third recommendation is also aligned with the first two, is that we also need to have an ongoing debate. And that the reason is that these bioethical questions, they involve us all and they impact us all. And I like uh, the work of the Rathenau Institute, which is an institute in the Netherlands, and they organized the so-called DNA, DNA Dialogues. And I also was involved in the preparation workshop to come up with different scenarios. And then the institute went to schools, to markets, to all kinds of different places all around the Netherlands to see how people in the Netherlands react to different DNA technologies like genetic selection, maybe even genetic modification. And they use it to come up with a report and that they gave that as their advice to the Dutch government. So in that way, it's more of a democratic process instead of leaving it to commercial parties, to the, to the marketplace, or maybe also to politicians themselves to come up with what they think is so important. So in that way, government organizations and politicians, they are informed by the opinion of their inhabitants and then they come up with their own arguments and then form that into laws and regulations. And hopefully concerning the second point, that it will be a global effort. So to summarize, I talked about what is ethics, bioethics, why it's important, the course in Rome, the lessons I learned, the issues around bioethics, and also I shared free recommendations. So to come back to my story, at the end of the summer course, I received a certificate. And I, of course, I also had some time in the evening to visit Rome. So I went to the Vatican, to the Trevi Fountain, to these amazing buildings, ancient buildings in the center of the city, to the river, and also to the Colosseum. And I had the opportunity to have amazing ice creams, and all gelato, and also astonishing espresso and cappuccino. So when I now think of Rome, I have these memories of this amazing city, but I also think of the lessons I learned, the insights and the debates I had uh, around bioethics. And I think that's really cool that I go, can go to a place where I can combine living a great life, having a sort of vacation, and also combine it with gaining knowledge and insights on this really important domain of bioethics. So thank you for watching. Please leave a comment down below if you have a question or a remark, or also want to share what you think are the most important issues in bioethics. And subscribe to my channel if you want to have a notification when I publish a new video, and go to my website if you want to have in-depth knowledge on the domain of human enhancement, human augmentation, ethics, the impact of technology, and there you can also find a free download. And you can also go to my website, and the links are below, if you want to hire me to deliver a keynote presentation, or a webinar, or maybe some other consultancy advice work. And with that, I hope to see you in the future. Arrivederci.